Hello and welcome. This is January 12th. This is the Education Committee in the Vermont House of Representatives. And we are just going to have a brief discussion on what the week is going to look like so far. Um, this afternoon, we're going to be meeting with the um, House uh, General Housing and Military Affairs Committee. We will be looking at um, uh, health care bargaining for school employees. And um, this is addressing uh, what the, the, what can be bargained and what cannot be bargained. This was kind of a complicated uh, thing that emerged in 2018 um, uh, related to a uh, veto by the governor of the budget. And um, out of that, we had Act 11 that created this commission. Um, and I'd probably say something when we meet with them as well. Um, so this week, tomorrow, we are going. We are. My goal this week is to get an update to hear from the field. Um, how how are we doing? How are our students? How are our faculty? How are our community? How are our communities doing um, in the period of COVID nineteen? So we are going to hear from various groups. We're going to hear from the super superintendents tomorrow morning. Um, this will be followed by the principals. Um, and then in the afternoon, we'll have the uh, sexual harassment prevention training. And the operative word there is prevention. Um, I'm assuming that's going to be about an hour. And if there's opportunity to get more after that, I'll let you know. Uh, and then on Thursday, we're going to get an update from the Agency of Education, and we'll have an opportunity to get a sense of, of guidance and, and what, what, what their sense is of, of how we're doing. Um, we will also be um, hearing from the school boards and I believe that we're working on getting the teachers and the guidance counselors in. Is that correct, Jesse? That is correct. Okay. So we may end up meeting a little bit later on Friday afternoon to accommodate teachers that are teaching. Um, and we will we'll be hearing about that. Given that uh, we have nobody that has to drive home to the Northeast Kingdom or down to um, Pownall or, or, or you know, the southern part of the state, um, we, will, I, I, we will be holding our, our committee meetings a little bit later than we might have on a Friday. Um, Let's see. Uh, I'm currently, we're, Jesse and I are currently working on uh, getting um, a presentation for you on education finance. Education finance is going to be part of one of the tax workshops that J Representative Ansel talked about, but it's coming a little bit later. Uh, I felt that our committee should have a, a better understanding of, of how education finance works. Um, and because uh, people are going to be asking you, so it, it'd be helpful to be informed. And uh, don't be afraid; it's it's complicated um, whenever you're dealing with something that is fair or easy. <laughs> um, easy isn't generally not fair, so uh, it, it's a complicated system. Um, I'm also looking to get information from the Agency of Education, and Ted Fisher is in the room um, with us, so he's listening, but he's He's just listening right now, and I'll let you know, Ted, if I want your attention. Um, we're, we'll be uh, asking to get information on how the CRF funds were spent. That's COVID relief funds that came out of the CARES Act last year. Um, we're looking at how was that money spent and what is left. Um, Jesse, would you, when we do that, will you also invite Robin Shai? and that's S-C-H-E-U from the Appropriations Committee. She will be our liaison to um, our committee uh, for um, pre-K-12 um, funding. And I'd like her to be a part of that. And also um, Representative Conlon is also going to be our, our liaison to the Appropriations Committee. So he might have to head up to Appropriations now and then. I'm gonna keep saying up because they're upstairs. Um, so just, I'm still in the building myself. Um, so uh, we, will, we will be hearing, hearing from them. Um, we're also, Kathleen is also, oh good, here comes Casey. <laughs> um, we also will be, uh, Kathleen is helping. Kathleen has, was appointed by the speaker last year to serve on the um, select committee for the Vermont State Colleges that are our, 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 um, our report, uh, investigation on that. Kathleen is gonna, 
help us set up testimony on what that interim report is about. There's an interim report. Um, it, it will be updated, I believe, in February. Uh, I would like to, us to get in before that. Um, and we will hear from the people that wrote that report and a few others, including the Vermont State Colleges. Uh, we'll be working on what our role is in that. Um, our, this committee is the committee that created the select committee, um, or at least we, we presented our thoughts on the select committee to, to the appropriations committee. And, and, and that's how it got to, got to be. And um, Jesse, when we uh, take that up, would you also invite um, Peter Fagan from the Appropriations Committee. He's our liaison to higher ed, post-secondary. Um, I like to think of it as tertiary, but I'm the only one, so. Um, so if you could just add, add those two people from Appropriations when we're, we're talking uh, finance. Um, and then also, we have several bills that have, that, that have been um, sent to our committee. I'll be looking for spaces when we can have people come in and present those bills. And it might just be, I'm just gonna present a slew of them and then we'll have an opportunity to look at what we're gonna take up and what, what moves to the top of the priority uh, given the, the circumstances that we're in now and what could possibly wait um, and what the committee really doesn't have an interest in. <laughs> so, um, just uh, questions or thoughts on that? Is there are there things that you would like me uh, to know more about? I, I, I'm going to go to Kathleen just a second. I just remembered when I presented the wall, what the wall looks like. One of the things, uh, Jesse, could you pull that up again? Is that easy to pull up while just I'm on it. talking? When I refer to the wall, um, what I, I want you to know is that. Uh, bills that actually passed out of committee are sometimes uh, several bills all put together into one bill. We had an Act 46 bill, for example, that there were about, there, there were probably, yes, there were probably 15 different bills on the white side of, of that that were related to delays for Act 46. And they all went into one bill that we presented on the floor. That bill ended up dying in the committee of conference <laughs> um, and act, there ended up being no delays to act 46 um, in some ways. I think we're probably gonna hear that some of those communities in the, as they're working with um, closures that, that may have been a, a godsend that they were not dealing on um, merging or actually dealing on um, services. So, okay, thank you, Jesse. And, and any other questions on that? Or thoughts? Okay. So, um, Kathleen James, Representative James. Thanks, Chair Webb. Um, I just wanted to let everybody know that um, a revised and updated version of the Select Committee's report is uh, was posted yesterday on our website. Um, so the revision process is already well underway for that um, next February deadline. And I'll send a link to everybody when we're done here um, so that you can take a look. There are a bunch of new sections. And they will be presenting that the, the people that wrote that wrote that report. I will. We are inviting them into the committee to present it to us and the opportunity to ask questions. Um, Representative Austin. Yes, thank you. Um, I I think all of us have received a copy of the Tax Structure Commission's draft report mm -hmm. that I started reading that and when I, until I realized it was 183 pages long. But um, they're asking for p feedback, and I believe the Ed. Uh, fund is included in that report. And I'm just wondering if, I don't know if it would be our role as a committee to give feedback or maybe at some point when we had a chance to read at least the Ed Fund portion of that report to talk about it. I, you know, I don't know if that has really anything to do with us in terms of um, input, but. You know, that would be, will you bring that up when, when um, JFO comes in to present the Ed Fund to us? Mm hmm Yeah, some questions then. Okay. About that. Um, and that would be a, a discussion also with um, Representative Ansel as to where yep. that, it, it is in our uh, community <laughs> jurisdiction. Um, yeah. So. I think they're taking feedback until January 21st. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 
Okay. Um, let's see. Anybody else? So, uh, are there top, excuse me, topics of interest that you would like to make sure that we address this year? I want you to also, if you see bills that that are of interest to you that come through, bearing in mind that we are uh, under um, COVID-19 pressure. Madam Chair, are we um, considering radon uh, as something that could be on the horizon or? I haven't seen that anything come in in that regard. I do expect to see something um, related to school construction. Mm. Um, and I think that may end up being that, that this committee last year passed a bill out of our committee that ended up, I think, dying in the Appropriations Committee in the middle of COVID-19, was went through from our committee. Uh, we worked with the uh, Institutions Committee and sent it to Ways and Means, and it ended up dying up in, up in Appropriations. Um, there is possibility. We will be looking at the new COVID relief funds. Um, we will be at, I will be looking for a presentation on that at some point, but I'd like to work with um, like to work with our appropriations committee on um, the order of that. Um, but we will we'll have an opportunity to look at that. And it's certainly an interest of mine. I've been in touch with uh, Congressman Welsh's office about it. Um, I helped to get it as a priority for the National Conference of State Legislators. We are not the only, only state struggling with um, aging infrastructure in our schools. Um, we spent a lot of money uh, recently on lead remediation, and we um, certainly have spent a lot of money on um, HVAC in air quality. Um, and we certainly, we don't have anybody here representing Burlington, but we do know that Burlington High School is facing uh, quite a situation. Um, Representative James, did you have something else? Yep, thanks. Um, just wanted to, bills of interest. Um, I hope I copied everybody yesterday on um, the latest draft of the community schools bill. And if you have any questions about that, um, let me know, I'm gonna introduce it later this week. Okay. All right, Representative Austin. Yep. Uh, I'm still revising and working on the literacy bill, but literacy is a huge concern of mine and it has been since last year. And, you know, whether we take up uh, my bill or not, I would really like to hear again from the Stern Center and from the AOE and from, uh, there was a gentleman, I, I was looking for his name that spoke to us, I think from the BMG group that wrote the report on the struggling students. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd like to hear kind of, again, from all of them on the state of literacy in Vermont. I understand that the secretary also has that interest and you are taking, you've taken the bill that we passed out of committee last year, correct? Correct. And yeah, and, and you're introducing that. Um, I would say that uh, we have an opportunity this year, perhaps to use some um, of the money coming in from, from the current, I'm not sure what it's called, but we'll just call it CRF for now. Um, we'll have an opportunity to use some money for that as well as we, as we look at learning loss. Yeah. Learning loss and, and I think the, the NEA would prefer we called it you know, undelivered uh, education. That just yeah. hasn't happened yet. Yeah. Everybody's learning. I just don't know what they're learning. And it's not necessarily great stuff that some of the kids are learning. And I am including um, a section on the impact of COVID on learning uh, in this new bill. Okay. And remember, it doesn't have to be completely perfect before you, you, oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. Thank you, Kate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Better to get it, better to get it introduced and so we can fix it in committee. Okay. Um, let's see, Representative James, is that still, are you have another one? I, yeah. Um, I haven't really gathered my thoughts around this at all yet. Um, but Kate, you and I mentioned this in passing yesterday. If, if time permits, um, I would like to uh, at least learn a little bit more about uh, media literacy and how students in our schools are taught to assess sources, to understand and uh, have some discernment around what they see on social media um, and how to gain some skills around um, 
determining whether what they're seeing uh, online is accurate. Um, we can certainly, we'll certainly call on the agency to, to have a conversation with us about where, where it fits in the standards. And then I think over all of that, for, for me, as we're looking at, at um, things like the weighting study is um, who's overseeing the standards that they're actually being implemented. Um, I will tell yeah. you, when 9-11 when happened, I was working in the Williston Central School, and I remember walking into a classroom, and I saw some of the most amazing teaching um, as the, the uh, towers were being you know, decimated, and I was watching the teacher teach them how to uh, assess what they were watching, what was fact, what are they assuming, how do you, what, you know, what are you going to do with that assumption that you think it's the Russians, <laughs> for example, is this a known, it, watch, watching the teacher go through what they were assuming and being able to bring them back to evidence was, was really impressive. So there are some people that really know how to do this well. Yeah, um, I, I'd love to know how we're, how we're teaching that. Like I said, I haven't started to explore this, but, you know, um, I think sure there's I nothing... Nothing more vital to democracy than making sure we're all operating from a shared set of facts. Yeah. Um, so, if we have time, I'd love to. I'd love to take a look at that. Sounds great. And if anybody's interested, take a look at the Jill Lepore article called "Hacking of America." Um, it's pretty interesting um, discussion on on how we sort of gotten to the state of what's happened to um, media, and um, goes back to uh, the fairness doctrine and what happened in. Uh, the Reagan administration, and it's a fascinating article, and also refers to the founding fathers. Okay, sorry, I'm geeking out. Representative Toof. <laughs> Thanks, Chair Webb. Um, sorry, I was a little late. We had a caucus went a little bit long, so um, I was wondering, I don't know if you talked about it or if we're going to speak about it. I know in the governor's address, he spoke about, and I'm sure we'll know this after his budget address, but um, child care. Yes. And what that, retain, what that means to the agency of education. Right. That's a big one. <laughs> and I, I thank you. That, that is, um, that, that it is, that will be a very big conversation. Um, Thanks. Anything else? So I will see you then after uh, we will be, um, after the floor, we will be, I believe that's right. Is that right, Jesse? Can you just review the? Yes, it is. So you all have the house floor at one o'clock today, and then 15 minutes following that, we will be joining House General Housing and Military uh, to walk through there. So just to, to understand there, um, there was a bill that passed the Senate last year related to healthcare bargaining. Um, it ended up going to uh, House General Housing and Military Affairs. Um, it, we didn't do anything with it. Um, it's be, the, the bill that I think we're reviewing is the bill that came over from the Senate um, that is about to be reintroduced. Um, there was a bill that uh, j just also went to that committee that Representative Conlon uh, submitted um, so we're just going to sort of start that conversation and, and see what happens. I'm happy to talk with you a little bit about um, the history of, of how we got there. I think Representative, I think Representative Coopley and Conlon and I were the only ones that were in the Ed, ed Committee in 2017 and 18 when um, this came forward in the special session. So it may need another look. Um, Is that on our site yet? Um, is what? The 210030? Um, I, I don't know, but, but it, it was two, two, it was S226 from last year and it will be, um, I, I think it might be on the, it might be on the House General webpage if it isn't on ours. Okay. Uh, I don't think yeah. it's on ours. Okay. Jesse? It is on House General. Yeah. Okay. So we Wait, can... it's on ours now too. Okay. Unless that's outdated. Yeah, that's it's on. I apologize. Yes, it is on as of this morning. Okay. So everybody take a little break. We'll see you on the floor, so to speak. 
and we can go off live.